Good morning and welcome to the Mount Zion Primitive Baptist Church, St. Petersburg, Florida. My pastor is Elder Dr. Greg Murray. Welcome Sunday, October 18, 2020. Let us pray. Good gracious and heavenly Father, I thank you once again for another opportunity. Lord God, you woke us up this morning, and for that, we say thank you. Lord God, you started us on our way today. So Lord God, we praise you. Lord God, as we are opening up our, our hearts and our eyes today, Lord God, we're thankful because this is the day you've made, and we shall be glad and rejoice in this day. So Lord God, thank you for this day. Lord God, we're praying for those who are sick, those who are going through right now, Lord God, those whose hearts are still grieving. Lord God, we're praying for their strength and need. And Lord God, we're praying for this nation, one nation under God. And we're also praying for our government, and we're praying for our president right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we're praying for the church. We're praying for each and every believer right now in the name of Jesus. So now, Lord God, may the words of my mouth be the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. And I thank you, Lord God. So now, God, decrease, Lord, and increase the anointing of the Holy Spirit that's within. I thank you for this day. Amen. 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 Would you all indulge me for a second? Because what I want to do is say something about um, a man that's in my life. A man on yesterday, October 17, 2020, this man and I, 33 years ago, we got married. Yes, sir. And I married on that day my friend, a man who trusts me and I trust him, a man who truly loves me. Yes. A man who I truly love him. Mm -hmm. A man who I didn't go looking for, but whom God gave. Mm. And I became that woman who God gave unto him. So to my husband, the lover of my life, mm. Eric Key Hunt, mm -hmm. I love you. Happy anniversary. We also shared that day with a very special young lady who's in our life, our niece, Rhonda Walker-Taylor. Happy 35th birthday to her, and happy again to my husband, my lover, Eric Keith Hunt. All right. Thank you for allowing me to say that this morning. Let us get ready for church school. Let us get prepared and get ready for another lesson on today, October 18th. Love for Neighbors. That's coming from Luke chapter 10. Verse 25 through 37. It's a familiar passage in the Bible. Some of us have known it to be known as the story of the Good Samaritan. And, and, and it's a way of Jesus teaching, trying to explain some things. But the title says, Love for Neighbors. Love, not the emotion, but y'all, you know, as I told you before, fickle, but love being in action for neighbors. Well, who is my neighbor? Well, the way Jesus looks at it is anybody whom you come in contact with is your neighbor. Not just someone that lives next door. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about neighbors here at the church. We're not talking about this thing. We're talking about anybody you come in contact with. Jesus is saying that is your neighbor. And I want you to have love for your neighbor. So, Jesus is this teaching and the story opens up and I'm reading from New King James Version. It says, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now this certain lawyer, we're not talking about lawyers like we know of from back in my day, Perry Mason, the lawyers that you see on TV, the lawyers that you go and see guidance from right now. We're talking about a lawyer being that is someone who knows the law. What laws were they having in Jesus' day? We're talking about the biblical laws of Moses. 
And if he was someone, he probably was someone like typical, maybe like a scribe, but one who knew the law mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. and out. Mm -hmm. Who knew the law. Mm -hmm. So we have this the one who knew the law. And so, teacher, he says, what shall I do to inherit life? So this lawyer, this scholar of the Old Testament laws and traditions, decided to test Jesus. What shall I do? He's asking a question to inherit eternal life. Jesus, in turn, said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? What, in other words, what is your interpretation of the law? I'm dealing with a lawyer, so I need to know what's your interpretation of this law. So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. I think we have some technical difficulties this morning with the sound. So we're going to go back over this verse again, verse 27. He is answering and saying, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. What is he doing? This lawyer, this scribe, is now telling Jesus, he's quoting to Jesus from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 16 through 25. He's, he's now interpreting, and he's telling the one who is the law about the law. You see this? So he's saying, and then he says that you're supposed to love with all your heart and with all your soul and your strength and your mind. That's how you're supposed to love the Lord God, by giving your all in all. And then it says, and your neighbor as yourself. Now, he is reciting what all good Jews know to recite. Just like if somebody was to ask you, with what, what verse or what Bible scripture that you know? Everybody knows Psalm 23. You want to quote Psalm 23. Or for everybody in the world, everybody knows John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son of whomsoever believeth in him. So just like this, just like we tend to quote things that we know and say it and reciting it, just because you can recite something doesn't mean that you know it. Hallelujah. The devil in hell Come on. know how to quote scripture. Yes. But he knows how to quote it in a manner that's going to manipulate and not be God's truth. Come on. Because when you start reciting and you take even one word or one item out of it, you are no longer quoting God's truth. So this so this man, this this lawyer, this this scribe, this expert in the law of Moses is now reciting what all good Jews knew to recite. He's saying, love the neighbor as yourself. And then, in verse 28, he says to him, Jesus said, you answered correctly. That's right. Because Edna, that's right what you just said. You recited it just right. You were correct. And then Jesus says, if you do this, you will live. You gave the right answer. You gave the correct answer. You did well in what you quoted in the words. But he wasn't going to leave it alone. He wasn't going to leave it alone. Verse 29 says, but he wanted to justify himself. Said to Jesus. Now he wants to go a little deeper in and justify because of the things that he is feeling about the part that he threw in. And, because he, how do you know he threw this in? Because he says, and your neighbor as yourself. Um, because Jesus' definition of neighbor and God's definition of neighbor is everybody you come in contact with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, yep. So, all y'all that's out there, 
You're to love everybody you come in contact with. Right. You can't pick and choose who you gonna love. All right. Amen. All right. So he was trying to just he said, well, for who, for, for, for who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? That's the question that he puts toward the teacher. That's the question he puts toward the master. That's the per that's the question he put toward the word. Who is my neighbor? And Jesus doesn't answer. But what Jesus does is Jesus decides to tell a story of what we call a parable. And I like to tell the little kids that a parable, just to make it real simple, it's an earthly story with a spiritual heavenly meaning behind it. So Jesus decides to tell a story. Don't directly answer, but he tells a story to get his point across. He said there was a certain man who went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. This short story probably looks dead at that man. And this man is just looking for him to give him an answer. He says, a certain man. And if he's coming from Jerusalem, we're to assume that this man has to be a Jew. And he's headed to Jericho. But as he's traveling on the road, and it appears that he's by himself, thieves, and that happened a lot during the biblical times, thieves came, robbed him, not only robbed him, but they took away his clothing. They beat him so bad that he was left, he was half dead. They took everything he had and his clothing, so if darkness was to come, but the wounds didn't kill him, the night air would have. All right, Because he was left for dead. This man, this certain man, this man doesn't have a name, and it's not important for this man to have a name, but we gotta find the condition of this man. And then, verse 31 says, now by chance, a certain priest. Now this is Jesus telling the story. He says, now for example, he decides to start out with a certain priest came down the same road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. The priest. The priest. How do we apply this to life application? Who's a priest? Well, he could be a bishop. He could be a pastor. He could be a minister. Preacher. But he's a priest who works in the temple. And if anybody would have seen the condition of this man, stranger, on the side of the road, it says he saw him. And he passed by on the other side. Maybe he was in a hurry. I'm not gonna, I don't want to speculate. Maybe he was busy. Some say he didn't want to be unclean. That's what some Bible scholars say. But, but when I think about it, mm-hmm. when your mind is made up about what you ain't gonna do, you just ain't gonna do. All right, now. He saw him, mm-hmm. looked at him, kept on. and kept on. Mm-hmm. Because he didn't have the heart. Come on. He didn't have the heart of love. Life can get you busy that you're going to pass by a lot of things in life. Come on. But if you have love in your heart, Come on. it's going to stop you and make you do something and put it in action. All right, now. Right. So whatever reason, and you would have thought if nobody, nobody else, nobody else would have known, because what Jesus is doing, he was explaining Leviticus 19 and 18, which is the interpretation of Leviticus 19 and 18 says, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, talking about the Israelites, but love your neighbor as yourself, because I am the Lord. This is a command from God himself. So if anybody would have known, it would have been a preacher. Yes, yes. At least I suppose you can. Amen, amen. That the word, they stand before the people of God, that when they're preaching the word, that the word is not just for the people, but it's for them as well. Hallelujah. Because as a teacher, I get it before you get it. Mm-hmm. 
So he decided to pass by. Likewise, verse 32 says, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came. Now when he didn't get a look, he got a little closer. He looked. He decided to And he passed by. He passed by. Because it didn't interest him. So the Levite, who's the Levite? The Levite is an assistant to those in the temple. So, well, let me break it down to you like this. Who's the Levite? Well, it's the church folks. Come on. It's the deacons. It's your mothers. It's your trustees. It's your sisters. It's the brothers. It's the people <laughs> that are in the church. Come on. The church building, not the church. Come on. Because when it's in here, you react differently. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Amen. And so the church just looked, went close and looked at the situation and did nothing. I'm going somewhere with this. Pass by. Because now it's not the time. We're so busy doing other things that's going on in the world that the world needs us. But when it's in your face, Come on. When it's in your face for you to move to do something, what is the church doing today? So he passed by on the other side. Two sections of people Jesus is using as an example, and this lesson is so applicable today. What are you doing? Are you just passing it by when you see the need? Hallelujah. Well, but a certain now, Jesus specifically says certain, not by chance. So now Jesus is taking a story, and he's making it where it was a purpose-filled, divine appointment for a certain Samaritan. Now, who were the Samaritans? They were very despised and hated among the Jews. Priests, Levites, were not any doings with the Samaritans. Why? Because they were half Jews. Mixed breed, half breed. They weren't all of them. But last time I checked, if you got any part of the blood of the half, that means that you still are. All right now. You know, how can you divide up blood and say it's half blood? Come on. But I digress. Mm -hmm. And then with the Samaritans, they could not worship at the temple in Jerusalem. They worshiped elsewhere. And they only had the five books of the Old Testament that they live by, which is Ex I mean, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and Numbers. But isn't it interesting, see, let me tell you how God did this, that what the Jews recite come from the first five books. All right, now. But here, the Samaritan that Jesus is using in the story, somebody who is hated, Jesus decides to interject this person in the story and said that he journeyed, came and where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Hallelujah. This Samaritan hated among the Jews, and the Jews, and so just so you know, the Samaritans didn't like the Jews either, but they hated one another. They despised one another. They didn't think they were worthy. They didn't think they were great. They didn't like anything about them. And then they wouldn't even socialize with them. Oh, Nancy. As a matter of fact, they were referred to as dogs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This Samaritan looked, when he came upon this injured man who was left for dead, when he looked with his eyes, he looked with compassion, with compassion, with kindness. Hallelujah. What he saw, because I could picture all of this, what he saw was his own image in this man. Hallelujah. He saw the image of God because we were all created in the image of God. So when he looked at him, he saw God. Come on, he saw God. And the compassion, the kindness that came upon him, that he got all of his beast, which was a donkey in church. He went to him and he bandaged his wounds. He didn't just look, he did. He put the compassion.
that he had in his heart for this man. He didn't take the time to see whether or not is he a Jew, is he black, is he white, is he male, is he female, is he a lesbian, is he that? Hallelujah. Is it somebody that I hate? He didn't see that. He looked through it with a different set of eyes. Because we can't choose who we gonna help when we're doing it with the love. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. We can't choose who we gonna save because he's God. If that be the case, a lot of y'all including me wouldn't be saved today. Come on now. Come on. So when he looked and he got down and he decided to help, he banished his wound, pouring oil and wine, oil to soothe the pain. The wine's like medicinal, so it could be helping to disinfect so that he can clean him up. And he had all these things upon his person. All right. So he came. There's no telling what this man laying there was thinking, but see, God, sent someone who was going to have the compassion to help. See, this is helping somebody today. That you're you, going through something, and God is going to send someone your way. Thank you, Lord. That's going to be able to bring you the oil to soothe the pain and the, and the wine to wash away and disinfect you. Hallelujah, Lord God. Come on. That's Thank coming. You. Thank you. He banished him up, and then he took this man, picked this man up, and put him on his own animal. And as he's taking this man, I can see the care that he's giving this man. Making sure, probably gave him some water, but making sure, walking slowly, taking his time to get to the next town. Because he realizes the man is still in pain from the beating that he took. The beating that he took over life, the beating that he was left for dead. And sometimes life can beat you up. Yes, it will. You for dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God will send someone. Thank you, God. Along Thank you. the way. Thank you, God. That will help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so God. he brought him to a end. Thank you. And took care of him. Yes, Lord. He brought him to a place of safety. Thank you. See, he took the time to do this. Mm. We get so busy thinking that we have to be here and there. Mm. Ministry. We always say we're busy with our ministry. Mm. But you need to take the time and hear let, let God use you yes. as your ministry as a servant. Yes. The best yes. minister is that of that servant. Yes. So he took the time and he took him to an end and he took care of him. I see him gently taking this man, laying him on a, on a, on a bed. Making sure, getting food for him. He took care of this man, a complete stranger. Mm. Someone he did not know. Hallelujah. Had nothing to gain from taking care of this man. Hallelujah. Then the next day, when he departs, he takes out two denarios, which is like a two-day salary. And I know a lot of you all would not give up your salary to help a stranger. Mm. Mm. But if God tells you to do it, right, right. do it. Come on. Right. Because you gotta remember that salary ain't yours in the beginning. All right. My God, my and God. God who was allowing you to get it. Yes. So he obeyed God by giving and leaving money. Because he knew this man was not able to travel and go any further. Gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him. Mm -hmm. See, he left money. And said, whatever you spend, if you spend more than what I left, when I come again, it means he's coming again. All right, now. Come on. I will repay you. I think about Jesus. Jesus says, I'm coming back again. Come on again. He is saying that when I come again, I will repay you. Somebody, he doesn't even know. He is having so much compassion, so much kindness. Because when he looked, he saw himself. When he looked and he saw the wounds of this man, he saw himself. We got to not stop looking. Look at the man in the mirror and see you. Put yourself there and care and love. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. Love. Give up. God is asking you today that you need to give up some things. 
You got to give up some things and put love in action. Oh, it's good to say I love you. Yes, it is. 33 years I've been with my husband. When I say I love him, he knows I love him because I put my love in action. Just like he puts his love in me in action. So, Jesus said, so which of these three do you think was the neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? Was it the preacher, the bishop, the minister? Those who teach, those who doing the praying, was it them? Or was it the deacons, the mothers, the trustees, the stewards, the sisters or the brethren that's in the church? Was it them? Was it them? Was it the church that showed themselves to the world? Of the three, who is showing that they are a neighbor? Who is showing that they can show love? Of the three. Now the Samaritan, who you already in your heart despise, you hate. Yeah. Of the three, who showed that they that, that was their neighbor? when this person was attacked by things. Right Jesus asked a simple question. Mm -hmm. And he said, he who showed mercy on him. Now, you know how I know that he still ain't got it? Because he refused to say the Samaritan showed mercy. He said, he who showed mercy on him. Still refused to say the Samaritan. He still refused to acknowledge in his heart that this Samaritan, this no good dog, that's in their mind, yeah, come on. showed more compassion than my brother. Oh. Hallelujah. Show more compassion, show mercy. Since you answered correctly, Jesus said, now you go and you do likewise. In other words, Jesus is telling him, you go now and do just like this Samaritan in this, in this story has done. Right. You go and now when you go about your day to day, your life, you go and you treat everybody the same. Right. I want you to look upon them as compassion. So when you see a Samaritan, someone you despise, I want you to look at him mm -hmm. with love and treat him with the love that you are supposed to have for one another. He says, one must have love in your heart to be able to get along with everybody else and mm. to obey God. Come on. Right? To obey God. Hallelujah. Now that's a new commandment. There's a new commandment that Jesus went to the cross for all of us. Read me with it, John 13, 34, 35. The new commandment. And this is for the church, because this lesson is for the church. Yes. Because the church is failing the world today. Mm -hmm. The church is failing the world today. We're so busy doing everything else, but we're failing the one thing that we were supposed to do, and that is to love one another. <laughs> we're supposed to love one another. In John 13, 34, 35, he says, if you love one another, you can choose who you're going to love. You got to love the Republicans like you love the Democrats. Right. You got to love the men just like you love the women. You got to love those who don't have economic, those rich and poor. You got to love everybody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whether you want to or not, because you don't have a choice. Come on. You do not have a choice. You got to love. And then he says, and then when you do love, Jesus says, then the world will know who you belong to. All right. The world will know that you are my disciples. And that is the importance of the church today, that you have to love one another all so right. that we can all be disciples of Jesus the Christ. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for this time and this opportunity. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you for Amen.